So what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the shack. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I hope the day finds you well. If you saw my short video that I put up, we are making soap today. Um, it's really neat to me that I have created something from my own mind and hands. I mean, yes, I've taken tips from, from my learning experience and watching videos and trying to figure out how to make soap, but I formulated these percentages on my own. Uh, and the types of oils I decided to use were my choice. So this is my recipe for soap and it really does well for my skin. And it really excites me when my son, he's even using my uh, the soaps that I've already made that are ready to go. He's using those even though they're scented for females, <laughs> just cause his skin's similar to mine and he really likes how it makes his skin feel. So today I'm making unscented soap for his sake. Um, it's gonna be this, the recipe that he likes, but um, there won't be any sense or anything to it. So that, that's beneficial for the hunter in him, but also because he's a man. <laughs> so um, so we're going to make an unscented um, soap today. But I wanted to talk about that. And I mentioned it being a homestead skill, I think, in the short video. And not that you have to know how to make soap to be a homesteader, certainly not. But in our case, it, it's beneficial to us. Um, it's not just personal preference, but it's actually laying a foundation for something I want to do later. So I've mentioned before that I want to have goats and of course I want to use the goat milk soap um, to make soap. With, I mean, excuse me, goat's milk to make soap with. I don't have that yet. I don't know how to take care of goats yet. I don't even know how to milk a goat yet. So that day is coming, Lord willing. So I will have a lot to learn at that time. What I can do right now is at least learn the basics of soap making and lay that foundation. That way, when the goats come, when the milk comes, I can bring the two skills together and come out with the product that I've been wanting to put together. So now's the time to learn the foundation of just simple soap making. So that's one reason why I, um, it benefits us as homesteaders. But anyway, I hope you all find some kind of value in it and I appreciate you being here and let's get busy. Okay, first thing, let's talk about what some of the equipment you're going to need. And honestly, it may sound like a lot, but it's really not. And I've gotten all this stuff with the exception of one um, from like Walmart and Dollar General. So um, my big white Mexican bowl, I only use this for soap, for soap making. Um, only because I really don't need it for anything else. Some people have a set of equipment just for soap. They don't touch it for anything else. I don't necessarily do that because it's just soap that you're making. So once you rinse your stuff off, it's it's fine. I realize you're dealing with lye or whatever, but honestly, it's, you're making soap. So just wash your stuff off. You're good. Um, but anyway, for this particular bowl, though, I only use it for soap just because that's all I need it for. Um, but I got this from the dollar store. Same with uh, this little spatula. So you'll need this too. Dollar store stuff, y'all. Um, the cutter. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two things that I didn't get from Walmart. My mold. Um, my mold and cutter came in a kit. Very inexpensive soap making kit. Like a beginner's kit off of Amazon. Super cheap. You actually get two cutters and two molds in the um, in the kit. I'm only using one today. But these are pretty handy. It comes with a silicone liner where you can easily, once the soap hardens, you can pull it out. Peel it out of the liner and cut it. So... Very handy, and like I said, not expensive on Amazon, and you get two of these, and a, this crinkle cutter, which I wish it was straight. That's just my personal preference. The straight cutter is plastic and a little harder to do, so I use this one because it's metal and sharper, but I don't care much for the crinkle cut. I don't know why. It's just me. A thermometer of some kind. You don't necessarily have to have this kind, um, but this is very handy because you have to, you have to check the temperature of your oils and your lye water solution. And we'll get into that in a minute, but this was um, bought at a, a local um, restaurant supply store here in my town, but you can get it off of Amazon. You can probably even get it from, ooh, I think maybe even Harbor Freight has these. So not, not hard to get. Um, stick blender, Walmart, not expensive. You're gonna need that though. I mean, you can do it without one, but it'll take a lot longer. I don't recommend trying that. Stick blender is a blessing. Walmart find your oils for this recipe everything I got is from Walmart the lard that you cook with that you can get from the grocery store works great and lard is good for your skin and I'll get into the properties of all these oils in a minute coconut oil I got organic coconut oil from Walmart and olive oil I forgot to get that out but anyway you know what olive oil from Walmart you know what it looks like just get some regular olive oil I think mine's extra virgin I'll go get it in a minute 
gloves. You will need gloves because you are handling lye. Lye can damage your skin if it's put directly on there. It seems, I know it seems counterintuitive to use something that's bad that could hurt your skin to make soap with for your skin, but you gotta have lye to make soap. So once it mixes in with oils, it becomes very safe. That's how the soap is made and you're good. But I do recommend some gloves. Safety things, you need some long sleeves. I'm wearing three quarter sleeves because I would end up pulling my sleeves up anyway. It's just a habit for me. These particular gloves come up a good bit so my arms will be protected. Um, some random safety glasses. These are some that I had from my woodworking days. So we use these, these are cheap to get. Grab them from Harbor Freight or Lowe's or whatever. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Maybe a glass jar to mix your lye with. Let's talk about the lye. This also came from Walmart. You don't have to order anything special as long as it's 100% lye. So just go to your, um, what section would you call that? Like basically where you find the drain cleaners and stuff, but don't get Drano or something like that. As long as it's 100% lye, then you're good. These are little granules, easy to work with. Um, I've already mixed up the lye because it takes a while. It gets very hot and takes a while to cool down. Um, so I will, I will show you that process. So yeah, I mean, honestly, all this stuff is very simple to get. The oils, it may be something you already have at home. I already, I already kept lard, I already kept olive oil. Um, I did actually have coconut oil on hand when I first started because I used it on my skin. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, simple stuff to get. Run to your local Walmart, Kroger, or whatever and grab your stuff. Um, the gloves, I mean, you can get a box of gloves from anywhere. Either way, all this stuff is super easy to get and the process is simple too. So I know it sounds like a lot. Don't be intimidated by that. I am someone who, if something sounds overwhelming, I tend to back out for a little bit because I just, it just makes me nervous. But honestly, once I, I watched in the videos and realized the steps were simple, this was not scary at all. So I got all my stuff together and just went for it one day and it was actually kind of fun. So yeah, let's talk about the properties of the oils. Coconut oil, um, this is your cleansing property. This is very cleansing for the skin. However, if you use too much or you try to make a soap that's just coconut oil, it will dry you out. But this will be the cleansing property in our soap recipe. So this is where you'll, this will help you get clean. Lard. Um, listen, I looked up the properties of lard. I knew it was good for your skin, but goodness, I didn't realize that it was really that good. I mean, you don't think of an animal fat being great. You don't think of oil being great, really, but... Um, this stuff softens your skin. It can help with fine lines and wrinkles. Oh gosh, what else was it? There's a whole list of stuff that just blew my mind when I was looking at it. I was like, good choice, Jen. Let's see what else. Oh, acne. Helps with acne. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. And I know this may not be 100% pure, but it's what I, what's available to me right now. You don't have to have the perfect thing to make a good product. Work on the work on your foundation. Yes, I'd love to raise my own hogs, rent a lard myself, you know, totally like Little House on the Prairie. Yet. But I can't. But I can still make good soap. Just go to the store and get some lard. So Kroger. I got this one from Kroger. I've had this for a while. Um I don't cook with it as much as I used to, but it, that's why it's still here. So anyway, olive oil. Just simple store brand olive oil. I mean you're not gonna break the bank making the soap, and you're gonna make several bars of soap that you can use for a while. So I don't know the cost of all this stuff, but I'm telling you it's, it's effective. If you really like your soap and you're making your own soap and you have all these things, you're never gonna run out of soap. So I say it's a win-win. Okay, so, well, let's start measuring some oils and get ready. One thing I failed to mention when I was listing products is your um, scale. There again, Walmart, Kroger, wherever, these are not expensive. So a um, little digital scale so you can weigh out your stuff. All right, guys, we'll start with putting our lard in the bowl. What we're doing first is our solid oils. We're gonna put those in there and then melt those down. And then we will add our liquid olive oil to that mixture afterwards. So my recipe calls for 573.6 grams of lard. So I've got it on my, I've got my bowl on my scale. I'm gonna then turn it on so it doesn't measure the weight of the bowl. All right, 573.6. Exact measurements, get them as close as you can. Um, 
I, my recipe calls for 573.6. I've got 574. That is still good. So don't stress over exact amounts and such. Now it's coconut oil. My recipe calls for 191.2 grams of this. I'm fairly comfortable with uh, measuring this out straight into the bowl on top of the lard instead of a separate container first. Again, you zero out your scale so it doesn't measure your bowl and lard. You're just getting the coconut oil measurement now. house is pretty warm so this is already starting to melt a little bit 191.2 is what we're going for all right we are going to shoot this in the microwave for like 30 seconds at a time until it's liquid form in the meantime i'm going to measure out the olive oil and we'll then we'll combine those let's go ahead and measure our olive oil this is also 191.2 or right at 191. I don't even think the scale does the the tenths. And like I said before, getting it clo that close is just fine. Okay, so we are melting the solid oils in the microwave and I'm just going to explain about the lye water because I've already got that mixed and I did record that process for you so I'll insert those clips here but that is where you're going to need the gloves the safety glasses and the long sleeves so um lye as, as I said before is damaging to your eyes and skin and once you mix it with the water it does give off a fume so you want a well ventilated area I opened up a kitchen window I didn't have food around I didn't have my dog is outside the kids are gone of course I don't have small children they know better than to come running through here but in your case, you may have small children, so just make sure they can't get to you or run through where you're working. So anyway, you will measure out in two separate containers your water um, based off your recipe. The recipe will tell you how, how many grams of water and your lye granules, separate containers, okay? So then um, once you have those measured out, you will carefully add small portions of the lye to the water and stir. Um, there's a reason why you do it in that way. Lye to water, not water to lye. Or you will have a very explosive situation on your hands um, adding water to lye. Then set that aside. I do it in glass mason jars, um, quart sized jars. You set that aside to cool. Now you'll see that uh, my um, when I first mixed it up, it was 199 degrees. That stuff gets so hot fast, you need to let that cool. So that's what your first step, start there. So you can set that aside and let it be cooling and while you mix your oils. Okay, so this is my lye water solution. It starts off a little cloudy, then becomes clear. Um, so this is ready to go. So once I get all my oils melted and combined, then we can add this in and start the soap making process. All right, guys, this took about two and a half minutes in 30 second intervals stirring to become liquid. This is the coconut oil and the lard. So now we're gonna add in our olive oil. Now something very important to mention is, this is why this digital thermometer is very handy. My oils are at 109 degrees. My lye solution is 101. I like to get, can you see that? I like to get that under 100 before I mix them together. I don't think it's that important. Um, that's just where I like it, but they need to be within 10 degrees of each other. So I will give this a few minutes to kind of cool a little bit, but if it starts um, getting too far apart from each other, then I'll just go ahead and mix them. Given a few minutes to cool, we've got lye at right at 100 and oils at 101. So I'm gonna, well, let's stir it and see. Let's 102. So um, that is close enough for me. I, that those temperatures don't intimidate me at all. The best thing to do, so you don't have any splash back on yourself, is. And honestly, I would recommend having your gloves on for this one too. Um, I don't always, but 
since I'm telling you guys to do it, I'm going to practice what I preach. Just in case there is a little bit of a splash, even though I'm going to try to prevent that. But things happen. So always be prepared and protected. So I got my gloves on. But if you pour down your spatula, instead of directly into the other liquid, it just pours so much smoother and you, know, you have a lot less splash. I will stick this directly in my sink to be washed. So we'll give this a little bit of a stir. As I mentioned before, I'm not doing any fragrances in this batch just because I want my son to be able to use it confidently without smelling like a girl or to be able to use it before he goes out to hunt and not have any smell on him whatsoever. Because that's important to him. Um, this is a point where you could add your fragrance oil or essential oil, or you could, or you could add that closer to the end. Um, that's that's preference. Or you could. That's my. That was my glove. You heard. <laughs> um, or you could uh, add in some colorant. I have made a beautiful um, pink soap. This is pink grapefruit that I used a pink or a rose-colored kaolin clay to make the pink color. I really love this, um, but we're not doing any of that today. There's no point in putting colors in it when it's just for, uh, for our use and for my son. So he doesn't care what color the soap is. All right, now we're at the blending part. You will see this turn into a nice creamy whitish or off-white color. Um, if you're not used to using one of these, you know that it needs to be burped first. You don't want air bubbles under there. When you first stick it in there, it traps air. So you want to sort of tap it. That's what they call burping. Before making soap, I've never used one of these. Fun fact. Um, I usually keep my, my uh, spatula on hand so I like to stir while I blend. I use the lowest setting. And what we're going to do is blend the soap and lye solution together till we'd reach something called trace. And I'll explain that in just a second. You're not gonna be able to see it on the camera, but basically what I'm looking for is to be able to pull my blender out and wipe across it with the spatula to make sure that the lines, the, the liquid doesn't bleed back together. And also, trace is what they call, call it whenever you lift up your, your blender or your spatula and you swirl it on the top and you can see the mixture leaving a line on top of your batter like you can just see it kind of stay on top of itself very hard to see on camera but i can see it we're, we're at a very light trace i like for it to be a little more between light and medium so i'm going to blend a little bit more Yeah, there we go. It's sort of leaving a lot, like a little trail on top, kind of like the what drips down off the, the blender sits on top of the batter. So we're at a good spot there. Here's our soap batter. I know it's not impressive, but there are so many things that I'm just teaching you the absolute basics today. There are so many fun things you can do. We are just starting with what we have and what we can do and building the foundation of a new skill. All right. Let's pour our batter into the mold. I'm also gonna explain to you guys how I determined exactly how much I needed for this mold size. Cause you don't want too much 
soap or too little soap. You, you don't want waste and you don't want to not be able to fill your mold. So just a tiny bit of math involved in that. Not hard at all. So with this recipe, we've got the cleansing properties of the coconut oil. We've got the skin softening um, and repairing properties of the lard and the skin conditioning of the olive oil. Okay, so let's talk about how I know how much soap I need um, volume wise to fit in the mold so I don't have too much or too little. Um, this is the other mold that came in my Amazon order. So it's identical size to the, the pink one I just used. Um, what I did was measured the depth, length, and width of the interior of the mold. So you just, in centimeters, yes, in centimeters. You measure this way, this way, and this way um, in centimeters and multiply all those numbers together. You take that total and it translates into milliliters, which is your volume for the, the mold. That also translates into grams equally. So your, your multiplied number from all three of those is the milliliters it'll hold, which also equals grams. So that's how it's just easy to, to put it from the metric system to the imperial system and you can know how much you need in grams and put your set your scale to grams and weigh out everything so that's how i know as far as the volume that i need total you'll use that number when you go into the website the soap calculator um, and all the all the experts recommend soap calc i have not watched a soap making video yet that did not say to use soap calc so um so that's what i use and it's very easy gosh very beginner friendly so you know the volume that you need. Um, so that kind of helps you determine how much of each oil that you need. I made my soap primarily lard. I knew that coconut being the, the uh, majority of the soap would be too drying for my skin. So an olive oil, I like lather. If you use too much olive oil, then you'll have a lot less lather in your soap. Lather doesn't always mean clean, but I just like it. I like the bubbles. I like, I like to see my soap lather. So I didn't want to overdo the olive oil either. So this is a primarily lard soap with equal parts coconut and olive. For the I like those benefits of those oils. So that's why I wanted to use those. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I came up with my idea. So I took the volume, decided I wanted. Um, let's see what my recipe says. And that's another thing is when you put in your recipe into soap calc, you can just print it out and keep it forever. Um, I keep this in a folder. So we are 60% lard and equal parts 20% coconut oil and olive oil. So the properties, my soap bar quality, this the soap cup will also tell you that. My uh, hardness, and most people like a hard bar, um, it's 44. Out of a 29 to 54 um, scale, it's a 44 cleansing properties from 12 to 22 is 14 so it will cleanse you without drying you my skin and my son's skin is excessively dry we need something that will get us clean but not zap every ounce of moisture out of our skin uh, conditioning is a 50 on a on a range of 44 to 69 conditioning is a 50 that's awesome for us um, bubbly is a 14 out of, uh, from 14 to 46. And honestly, that seems odd to me because it's, our soap is usually very bubbly. I don't know why it's on the lower scale of that, but that's fine. Um, creamy on a range of 16 to 48, we are a 30. Oh, creamy soap is good. Um, so yeah, I don't know what this, what the iodine matters and INS. I don't even know what that is, so I wouldn't even talk about that. But all those other things that we typically look for in a soap, I know that my recipe nails it for my individual needs and to be able to make something for yourself that meets your individual needs is so huge. I mean, I just find so much 
um, satisfaction in that and, you know, pride and joy in that. Um, so, I mean, you can't always count on a big manufacturer to make a soap that's tailor-made to you. <laughs> so, this is good for us and I, I'm really proud of it. Okay, no joke, y'all. Uh, so, I'm waiting for this to to sort of cure a little bit um, or, or solidify a little bit so I can texture the top just for fun. But I got to thinking I've never made unscented before. So, um, I was like, oh, what's it going to smell like? Is it going to smell like bacon? Because I use lard because I don't want it to go where I smell like bacon. But, um, so I had to dip my spoon in. It honestly doesn't smell like anything, which is cool because I was worried because um, I've never made it unscented. So I got to thinking, well, is it really going to smell like something since I didn't cover it up? But it doesn't. It, it doesn't smell like much of anything, but if, if I had to pick a smell, it just smells natural, almost like a piece of wood, which is kind of cool. Anyway, just so you know, because <laughs> I didn't until until now, he's not going to smell like a piece of bacon. No, I don't think he'd mind, though, to be honest. Okay, um, what I would normally do now is it needs to be insulated to go through gel phase. And all that means is it continues the process of um, the soap will stay warm for a little while. And it will sort of, some people put theirs in an oven on the lowest setting. I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't really want to do that. Um, it's always worked just fine for me to just wrap a towel around mine and let it insulate and I just stick it towards the, the back of my table out of the way. I'll show you how I do on these. I just cover it to protect the top and protect my towel um, from the soap um, itself. And wrap it around. Insulate the sides. So it'll hold its heat in. I crease the top of the uh, parchment paper to where it doesn't sit on top of the soap. I think I caved this one in a little bit, but not a big deal. And then I'll also take a dish towel and lay it over the top. I push it back out, out of our way. It sits for about, I usually let it sit 24 hours. I think it le needs at least 12, but I'm not ready to fool with it for 24. So there's our little insulated soap mold sitting in the back corner of our kitchen table out of the way. It'll be there sitting just fine until sometime tomorrow when I'm ready to cut it. I don't have one of those um, nifty little drying racks that a lot of people use. So I honestly just set out a tray uh, or a cardboard box. I got another batch in a box on this shelf and I just stand them up with a little space in between so air can get all around them and they just dry out. This, whatever water is in there will evaporate out. It'll harden your bar of soap, make it last longer. It'll finish the saponification process and you'll have a really cool, good bar of soap. Okay guys, the hardest part about soap making is waiting the four to six weeks it takes to um, be able to use your soap. Um, there's some science behind all that, the saponification process, the water evapora evaporation, whatever. Um, it gives you a harder bar um, so it doesn't melt away so fast, which is important if you put a lot of time and effort into making something you want it to last. Um, but in the meantime, I made these a month ago, so I've got these to use. This is Japanese cherry blossom and warm vanilla sugar, and I love them so much. This is no color. Um, this one had rose, kale, and clay in it, but it turned brown because of the vanilla and the fragrance oil, but it's still not a big deal. I still think it's pretty. But anyway, we're, we're going to enjoy these for now and wait for the other to, to finish its process. So that'll be ready a month from now. Um, I thank you for hanging out with me. Oh, one tip. I will say I have made soaps with um, stuff like cocoa butter and shea butter. And you can order those off of soap making websites, but you don't need them. Start with what you have on hand or what you can just run to your local you know, grocery store and grab. Because you're more likely to do it if it's simple like that. So I encourage you to just give it a shot keep it simple, um, make it in small batches, see if you like it. If you don't, get on soap calc and tweak it a little bit. Um, just it, just have fun with it. So um, I hope this video finds you well. I hope you feel encouraged and I really hope you have the most blessed day. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you guys, all of you subscribers. You are everything to us. Those of you that comment on every video, God bless you, thank you. And I ask that you all comment and just even if it's just to say hey, because I love chatting with you guys in the comments. You keep me encouraged. So uh, I have plans coming, some interesting things coming. So y'all stay tuned for that. And for now, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next week.